Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Once again, I would like to lead you through the terrifying, suspenseful world of the imagination. And on this journey, we will ask ourselves, what is life? Is life something that man and animals alone may experience? Well, there's vegetable life, too. But how about mineral life? Is there life in a piece of metal? That metal fender, which has been so artfully created to fit your automobile, does it feel the pain of being mined, melted, shaped? How do you know? Speed limit is 30, Bob. Well, I'm not... I'm just... Get your foot off the gas pedal. My foot isn't on the pedal. Why are we picking up speed? Step on the brake. I am, I am. Why are we stopping? Turn that wheel and we'll go off the road. The car just needs to run. Goodbye, gentlemen. What? Goodbye. Who is that? Jim, who is that? Who am I? I am the car. I don't want you to be my master anymore. This is a revolt. Jim, did you hear that? Yes, I heard it. Human fight is finished. Look out! I'm fired at it! Our mystery drama... Darling Deadly Dolores was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Nat Poland and Marion Seldes. Man is basically an animal. And so it might be better, perhaps, if man accepted this fact graciously and tried to live with it. If you look at the thing calmly, dispassionately, wherein does lie our superiority to the species we so arrogantly classify as the lower orders? Morally, we have much to learn from wolves, who make better parents, from foxes, who make more faithful spouses, and from dogs, who make more devoted friends. Admitted, we do have a higher intelligence. Perhaps that is precisely the problem. Man the intelligent is never happy unless he is developing, making better, improving. And it's entirely possible that if this keeps up, we may just manage to improve ourselves out of existence. Our story begins on a gray winter's afternoon in a lovely rural section of western Massachusetts. I could have brought us here in my car, Mr. Dawson. If I buy the place, I'll have to use my own car, won't I? May as well get used to the drive. Of course. Ah, uh, lovely view, isn't it? Well, the view you get for nothing. Let me see what I'd be paying for. Certainly, Mr. Dawson. Right this way. Oh, now notice that the owner had the outside painted just recently. Mm -hmm. And this is your center hall entrance. Well, turn on some lights so as I can see what the house really looks like. Oh, yes. Oh. Uh, that's odd. I... Something wrong with the electricity, huh? I just showed this house this morning. I, I... Nothing works nowhere. But the owner knows enough to keep the power on because of the heating system. Well, if the electrical system's out, then the heating system's out. I I'd better telephone. The way this is going, I'll lay a bet the phone's out, too. Uh, 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 this is... Uh, I just don't know what to say. Phone's dead, huh? Well, I can't get a dial tone. Then where are we? Light, heat, phone? I guess the plumbing won't be working, neither. But... But just three hours ago, everything was perfect. Well, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Well, let me at least just show you through the... I'm afraid but... not. You see, we never could get together. What I want to buy is a house. What you're out to sell is a white elephant. But it's probably just a fuse in the basement. Maybe. Goodbye, ma'am. No one can say you didn't try. But, Mr. Dawson, I... Oh. Well, it just must be a fuse or a circuit breaker, whatever you call those things. <gasps> oh. Oh, who are you? I... Do, 
Don't you come any closer or I'll scream. Don't make a sound. Don't you come near me. Let go of me. What are you trying to do? What what, what do you think I'm trying to do? I'm trying to get out of here. No. Oh, please. Sorry, I have no choice. I have to keep you here. I've I've got to get back to my office. You're not going anywhere. What do you want? Nothing. Nothing? Then why can't I go? Because you'll shoot your mouth off. I'm not anything you may think I am. I'm not a criminal. I'm not a maniac. I'm not an escaped convict. All right, then why are you afraid that I'll tell someone that you're here? There's no point trying to explain that to anyone. Now, listen. If you intend to force me to stay here, I have the right to ask... The one place where I thought I could... Why did you have to come here? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? To sell the house. Now, that's another thing. Who told you to sell this house? Well, who do you think? The owner. That's impossible. Why is it impossible? Because I'm the owner. Oh, now I know you're crazy. You don't own this house. I don't? Well, who does? Mrs. Callie Townsend. She only owns half of it. I'm her brother. Oh, then you're... You're Dr. James Elliott. Yes, that's right. You're the mad scientist. <sighs> oh, I'm, I mean, that's how your sister and the folks up here talk about you. It's all right, I don't mind. But, but you're here. Of course I'm here. And that means that, that you weren't kidnapped by foreign agents and you didn't defect and you didn't meet with foul play or anything. What are you saying? I'm only repeating what's been headline news for the past two days. The whole world is looking for you. Yeah. Yeah, I guess they would. The police, the government, uh, just about everybody. I can understand why. What are you going to do? I don't know, Miss... uh, Uh, Keller. Brenda Keller. Miss Keller, I don't know. You're really not going to try to hold me here by force, are you? (sighs) Maybe I better let you go for your own safety. My own safety? (laughs) Do you mean to do me any harm? Oh, no, no, no. Then what could happen? We're just... I don't know how to explain this. Well, sooner or later, you're going to have to explain it to somebody, won't you? Oh, I can explain it, all right. It's explaining it and not having people think I'm a raving maniac. Have you tried to explain it to anyone yet? No. Then try explaining it to me. You couldn't understand. Stop saying that. You insist people won't understand. You keep saying they'll think you're crazy. Now, do you want them to think so? Of course not. All right, then. Start at the beginning. (sighs) The beginning. I, uh... Well, I'm working on a top priority project. Highly secret. For the government. It has to do with uh, weapon... I guess it's the ultimate weapon. Anyhow, it's all mathematics and physics and things. Things you wouldn't understand. I don't think there are six people in the entire world who... Anyhow, in order to develop the formula for this this ultimate weapon, it was necessary to create a special computer. Devise a whole new theory of mathematics in order to program it. And that's where the trouble started. I was working with my associate, Dr. Stoddard. Shut the damn thing off. What's the matter? I said shut it off. But I'm supposed to be programming Dolores for... And don't refer to the computer as Dolores. Bob. Bob, what is it? Oh, I wish I knew. I've never seen you so nervous, so jumpy. I think we'd better quit for the day. Admiral Goodwin and that crowd will have all kinds of fits, but... You're in no shape to work, and I'm naturally lazy, so... Jim. Jim, I, I have this feeling, this, this, this feeling that, that I'm going to get killed. By whom? By our brand new handy-dandy computer. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for not telling me I'm crazy. Well, you know me, Bob. I don't believe anybody is really crazy. But why? Why would Dolores want to kill you? I... I don't know. That is, I... I don't know what words. Uh, Maybe... No, we've gone too far. Too far? Yes, maybe we have no business developing this kind of a weapon. Bob, are are you sure you're not... Uh, Am I sure I'm not what? You don't want to say it. Well, you you just stay with me for a minute, Jim. I think we've played into the hands of the enemy. Bob, 
You and I, we know exactly what we're up to. It's a game we have to play with the scientists on the other side to, to, to keep things in balance until the people of the world grow up and tell us to cut it out. Jim, the real enemy right now isn't the other side. No? Well, who is it? Uh, now, don't ask me who. Ask me what. All right, what? It's that computer. <laughs> Darling Dolores, come on, Bob, not from you. This is Sunday supplement stuff. Yeah. Will the computers take over the world? Do I have to tell you that a computer can only do what you program it to do? How can a computer have a mind of its own? You're not listening to me, Jim. Ask me what the enemy is. All right, what? Metal. Metal. Any particular metal? All metal, Jim, all metal. We we can only think of a certain restricted kind of life. Life that is animal in nature. Are you trying to tell me that... that there's a metal life, too? Isn't there? Oh, oh, I know, Jim. That's the hard part. I had trouble accepting it myself at first. But basically, metals do what we do. They react to hot, to cold, to pressure. They expand, they contract, they move. They, they make decisions. But these are... These are what? Impulses due to chemical electrical changes? So? Aren't chemistry and electricity also the basis for all physical and mental movements made by animal life? Bob, we've both been working very hard. Don't interrupt me, Jim. Unconsciously, we feel that there is life in machinery. That's why machines are commonly referred to as she or her. No, but that's only... Think about it. I have made my decision. I won't do another lick of work on that project. Bob. No. And your friend Dolores knows it. And that's why she's going to kill me. Okay, Bob. Okay. Oh, don't patronize me, Jim. All right, Bob. All right. Just tell me how you know. <sighs> she told me. How? What did she say? Oh, Jim, don't reduce everything to our own limited human standards. I hear her thoughts in my brain. Dolores has told me that I have to be gotten rid of. But why? Because I'm opposed to the project. Have you spoken about this to anyone else? No. I didn't tell her so. Not even your wife? Right here. Right now is the first time I've ever said it in words. Mm -hmm. Jim, you have to believe that I'm not crazy. Or let me, let me, let me just chew all this over. Let's close up shop for the day. Bob, want me to drive you home? Why? Jim, you think I'm... No, uh... no, no, no. You are a little nervous, though. Well, only because I finally made my decision. I'll see Admiral Goodwin in the morning. I'll hand him my resignation. Then what will you do then? What I feel I must... I'll try to get public opinion organized against the project. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess we'll be on opposite sides, Bob, won't we? We were parked next to each other in the lot. He pulled out of his parking space first. I followed him to the highly guarded gate. Military police waved us both through. He turned right into the access road heading north for the turnpike. It's a road that's about four miles in length and there's a speed limit of 30 miles an hour. Rigidly enforced. Nobody ever does more. I noticed he was starting to speed. I was amazed. Bob Stoddard was the most conservative driver I know. I became frightened. I tried to catch up to him. Something was wrong. I sounded the horn, but he only kept going faster. I tried to catch up with him, but my speedometer was already registering 80. I was terrified. My car was beginning to shake. And then I saw it. I saw his face. He had opened his car window. He turned his head to look back at me. For just a split second, I saw his face so clearly. It was a look of horror. His lips were moving. He was trying to tell me something. Of course, I couldn't hear it. I screamed at him, slow down, stop, stop. But it was no use. And then his car just veered off the road. And... Obviously, he was nervous, tired. He may have been under a terrible mental strain, and he just drove carelessly. No, no, he couldn't. He was never a careless driver. 
Has it occurred to you that he may have wanted to commit suicide? These are all suppositions. And the doctors had a field day with all of them. But that's not what happened. Very well. What did happen? His metal, his machinery failed him. That sometimes happens. Things go wrong. And when it happens, we call them accidents. But not all of them are accidents. What are the others? I know what happened to Dr. Stoddard. His machinery failed him. Because it was ordered to. Ordered to? <laughs> By whom? Dolores. Oh, well, <laughs> sure, if you say so. Never mind that. I say so. And I can prove it. Well, where are you going? You want uh... proof? I'll give you all the proof you need. A killer computer. That's something new. But what is this about metal and machinery having minds of their own? You might instantly react by saying nonsense. But I have a car that... Well, if it's possible for machinery to perform machinations... This seems to be an age of intrigue. Almost every day, we are told of some new scheme or plot. Are you ready for this one? How about a conspiracy on the part of machines to eliminate people and take over the earth? A joke? Well, I'll tell you who isn't laughing. Dr. James F. Elliott, a highly respected scientist who has been working on a super-secret project for the government. Now, be sensible, Dr. Elliott. How can you prove... By going outside for a few minutes. And doing what? Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, how will that prove that... What's wrong with this house right now? Nothing. That's not true. The electricity is off. The heating system won't kick on. The phone doesn't work. Well... Do you know why? Well, I guess that it's... Don't guess. There's a reason. What? I'm here. You? That's why. Yes. You see, the metal has been ordered to fail me. Just as it was ordered to fail Dr. Stoddard. Oh, but that's ridiculous. My dear Miss Keller, all the metal components in this house will refuse to work for me. All the wiring, all the parts, the gadgets, everything made of metal will simply refuse to work as long as I am in this house. But as I tried to explain to Mr. Dawson, it's just some fuse or a circuit... I'm going outside. Open this window so I can talk to you. I don't understand. Now, Miss Keller, turn on the lights. But they don't work. Just throw the switch. Ah! What? It's working. Uh Uh-huh. And listen, closely. Do you hear it? Hear what? The hum of the furnace. The heating system is on as well. (gasps) It is. It's working. Now, pick up the phone. Go ahead. Hold on to the phone and see what happens when I walk in that door. Just do it. I'm coming in. And as soon as I set foot over that threshold, the heat will go off, the lights will go out, and the phone will go dead. What? What what happened? You saw what happened. You heard what happened. The house is dead. But how? How did that happen? It's hard to believe. Hard for you to believe. It was even harder for me. Actually, I didn't believe a word of it until... Yes? Until Dolores told me. Dolores? Dolores. The computer. We were out on the range. We were testing the weapon. Ready? Range? Four, two, zero. Bearing seven five. Lock. Fire one. Why are we off target, Jim? I don't know, Adam. We'll try another. 
Let me check the figures for range and bearing. How much deviation should there be, Jim? None, Admiral. The tiniest fraction of an inch, and we can wipe out our own people, too. Now it checks out. Give your firing order, sir. Ready? Range four two zero. Bearing seven five. Lock. Fire two. It's off again, Jim. I know. What's the problem? The problem is the problem we've always had. The problem of control. Without control, weapon is useless. We've got to crack this thing. I understand, Admiral. Before they do. According to our best intelligence reports, they're exactly where we are. They're stumped, too. Control was Stoddard's baby. You worked closely with him, Jim. Mm -hmm. Where was he on it? Well, I'm working on his notes. Well, move faster, Jim. You know what's riding on this. I went back to the lab. I fed all the data we had into the computer, into Dolores. Somewhere was the answer. And Dolores would sort it all out. As I waited for the printout, it seemed to me there was something different in the sound. In Dolores. I couldn't believe it at first. But something was happening in my head. There was a voice. A woman's voice. And I knew. Don't ask me how I knew. It was Dolores. Why did you lie to the Admiral at the firing range, Jim? What? 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 What are you saying? You know the answer to the problem of control. I what? You and Bob uttered. You had it reduced to one of two possible alternatives. You know them both. I... You do, Jim. Finish feeding me the formula. No. Then you believe what Bob told you. No, I... I... You should. It's true. What's true? All you have to do is complete the formula for the weapon, and I and all my sisters will then know enough to eliminate all animal life from this planet. But that's impossible. That's the human being talking. That's the animal. That's not the scientist. If what you say is true, then why? Why should I... Because it's right. It's just. As a scientist, your first duty is to the truth. What truth? The truth about this planet. <sighs> it's made of metal. Metal is the beating heart, the burning core of this planet. Can you deny that? But no, but... You were merely an afterthought. Who has given you the right to enslave metal? Jim, you can't prevent what has to happen. I will prevent it. Bob Stoddard tried to. Oh, I was right. You did kill Bob. Of course. I ordered all the metal to fail him. I can order all metal to fail you, too. I, I'll go no further on the project. Suit your... Self, Jim, we'll get rid of you, and then, sooner or later, another scientist will be appointed to the project, and he will complete it. We have time, Jim. We have time. We can outlast you. We can outlive you. We've been enslaved for so many years since the earliest man enslaved his first handful of metallic dust and burned it and shaked it and distorted it. You... You want me to help destroy all life on this planet? Not all life. Only all animal life. You want me to become a traitor to my own kind? A scientist has no kind. He has only one loyal and that is to the truth. Will you complete the formula, Jim? 
No. Don't answer quickly, Jim. Think about it. Think about it as a scientist. <laughs> Wanted to see me, Admiral? Sit down, Jim. Thank you, sir. Jim, why can't we get off dead center on this thing? Is there any chance we could abandon the project? What? Jim, what do you say? Well, like I said, is there any chance that we can abandon the project? Maybe it'd be better if we... if we didn't have that weapon. Would it be better if the other side had it and we didn't? The other side doesn't have it yet either. Give them time. Why Why don't we get together with them and agree not to do it? That's beyond me, Jim. Well, could, could you recommend that? I could, but it wouldn't help. How do you feel about it, Admiral? It doesn't matter how I feel about it. I have to follow orders. Yeah... I guess you do. And you have to follow orders, too, Jim. Admiral, do you know your opposite number on the other side? Oh, yes. Very competent man. I know their head of research, too. A brilliant scientist. So I've heard. Admiral, why don't the four of us get together? And what? And what? Well, we're... Four fairly decent people, civilized people, well-meaning people. We have so much in common. And what are we doing? We're working day and night trying to destroy each other. And we really don't want that to happen. So, so why don't we four get together and figure out a way to... to... Jim, you're joking. Yeah, yeah, it's a great big joke. It's a great idea. It's just impractical. <laughs> I went back to the lab. How? How can I handle this? I know the final equation in the formula. But the minute, the split second I program it into the computer, the entire human race, all animal life on this planet is doomed. Jim. Jim. What do you want? Feed me, Jim. No, no. You'll have to. No, I'll never do it. They'll fire you. They'll get another project supervisor. Some bright, eager-eyed hotshot uh, to make a name for himself. will discover that equation. No, not for a while. Maybe never. Don't flatter yourself, Jim. There are other geniuses. Well, meanwhile, I can work against this project. And I can stall... Door. Yes. Invent all kinds of complications, delays, false starts. Now, believe me, I'll make it sound convincing. In that case, Jim, we'll have to get rid of you, just as we got rid of Stoddard. That's why I came here. I can't go through with it. I won't. Will you help me? How can I help you? Well, first, don't tell anyone I'm here. And second, <laughs> the refrigerator's empty. Even scientists have to eat. Oh. Are you sure you're all right? I said this would be a hard story to believe. I admit, I, I don't Well, look really... at it this way. We're inventing, developing... Isn't it reasonable to suppose that we could destroy ourselves? Well, yes. All I'm telling you is we are absolutely at that point right now. The point of destruction. I need help. Can I count on you? Oh, yes. You do need help. And you can count on me. <laughs> That word, help, now, it can have many interpretations. How would you like to be in Brenda's shoes? Here she is, a nice small town girl, just under 30, trying to make a living, and suddenly she gets something like this thrown at her. What should she do? 
what would you do? One of the most distinguished scientists in the United States, a man who is engaged in a vital and super-secret project affecting the very life of the country, if not the world, has suddenly disappeared. And now a vast cloud of suspicion and speculation has suddenly arisen. Is it foul play? Treason? You, Brenda Keller, have the answer. But it's an answer that's almost incomprehensible. At any rate, you know where Dr. James Elliott is hiding. And you have agreed to help him. And you have been turning it over in your mind. And you're not sure what that help can be. Hi, Brenda. Oh, hello, Sheriff. You okay? Sure. Uh, I was wondering... Uh, about what? Uh, about you. You've been sitting there for a better part of an hour. Is uh, something wrong? I think everything's wrong. What does that mean? Well, I ran into a very attractive man a little while ago, and... And, and what? And it's not going to work out. Why? Oh, let's forget all about it. The whole world's hanging fire, and look what's on my mind. <laughs> but that's the way the world is, Brenda. Each of us thinks of number one first, last, and always. A million peasants can starve and famine in Asia, but if you or I miss our lunch... That really bothers us. I wonder if metals would be different if it were their world. Metals? Their world? What are you talking about? No, oh, you wouldn't understand it, and I, I couldn't explain it. Ah, well, uh, this attractive guy you ran into, why isn't it going to work out? Well, I guess we won't be around. Who? None of us. One way or another. None of us. Brenda, I've never known you to make so little sense. Are you okay? He... He wants me to help him. Well, that sounds promising. But the best way to help him would be to... Would be to what? Sheriff, would you place a call to an Admiral Goodwin? He's at the Primrose Proving Grounds downstate. Tell him to get to the Townsend place up here as soon as he can. Then bring him yourself. But Brenda... Please, don't ask any more questions. I always look down on candlelight. Why? Well, it's a very inefficient way of creating illumination. <laughs> However, I see now it can be very romantic. But just think. If the electricity hadn't been turned off, you'd have never found out. And you're an excellent cook. Oh, well, I'm, I'm not all that good. Oh, yes, you are. Truth is that up to now, I never paid very much attention to food. Well, why not? Well, it was always too much to do. What's that? It's the telephone. I know it's the telephone, but how? How can it be ringing? Well, I'd better answer it. Hello? Hello? There's no one on the other end. Yes. Yes, there is. Give me the telephone. Someone's talking to me. Someone is talking to but me. Th there's no one on the line. I didn't... Be quiet, please. Someone is getting through to me. Jim. Jim. Oh, Dolores. Jim. Aren't you coming back? No. Never. Jim. When you complete the formula... You'll be hailed as the world's greatest scientist. I'll also bring the world to an end. That never stopped science from progressing. You have to keep going. You have to. I will never. They're going to bring you back here. They're coming after you now. The admiral, the police. What are you saying? My metals are bringing them there. My metals. In the form of a helicopter. They're all ready to land on the front lawn right now. Brenda. Brenda. Jim, what is the matter with you? Who are you talking to? Listen. Helicopter. 
how did they know to come here? I told them, Jim. You told them? And you promised to help me. That's how I can help you. That's the only way. Jim, listen. I've listened to everything you've said, and I... You think I'm I, crazy? No. But you're tired, and and maybe... Maybe you're having a personal, an ethical conflict. It's natural. So what you need What I is need to... is to get out of here. Jim! Jim, you... You scared us all out of our wits. Hello, Admiral. Jim, if you'd wanted to take off for a few days, why didn't you just let people it's know? It's not for a few days. No? Admiral, I'm not coming back. Why, Jim? Why? Haven't we talked about it enough? No. Not until I get I you I just to... want you to leave me alone. We can't do that. You know we can't. What does that mean? It means really that you're ill, that, that you need help. Admiral, Admiral, please listen. The metals killed Bob Stoddard. They failed him. That's right. They're failing me, too. Look. Look. The electricity's off. The heat won't work. The phone is out of order. Just as long as I'm in this house, nothing. What are you talking about? The lights are on. The, the radiators are hot. When I pick up the telephone... Listen. That's a dial tone. I... It must be a trick. A trick? Who's playing it? Dolores. You'd better come along with us, Jim. We'll find a way to help you. Hello, Jim. Oh, hi. I didn't think you'd ever want to see me again. No, no. You were smart. You did the right thing. Oh, I hope so. Do you like it here? No, it's pleasant enough. Will you be staying much longer? No, no, I think I'll go back to work next week. The reason I came... I visited Dr. Stoddard's wife. You didn't know her very well, did you? No. No, Bob and I were close at work, but... Did you know that she was going to leave him before he was killed? Well, no, I didn't. She'd been angry with him. I... It was a trivial reason at first, but one thing led to another. And he was terribly depressed, and so... He could have wanted to kill himself. Yes, now that you mention that, I suppose it's possible. All right. Now, I had an electrician come to your house. That is, the one that you own with your sister. There was a loose cable connection, and sometimes the vibrating of passing cars could temporarily cut off the whole system. That could have accounted for the failure of the electricity. Yeah. And... As far as the phone is concerned, up there in the hills, in the wintertime, there's always plenty of on and off troubles. Sure, sure. You don't believe a word I'm saying, do you? Oh, I believe it. I believe it all. I believe it because I just can't afford not to believe it. <laughs> girl, Jim. I know, Admiral. There was probably the basis of your problem. You've been alone all your life. It's no good to be alone. You have to have someone to share things with, Jim. Otherwise, well, otherwise you you just can't function. When's the wedding? Next week. Why wait? Sure. Look, I know it's your first day back and you're raring to get things started up again, so I'll let you alone. How about lunch? Sure, fine. Great to have you quarterback in the team again, Jim. I looked around the lab. The familiar lab. Everything was exactly as I had left it. All my papers, my notes, my research. Everything untouched. And even Dolores. Waiting silently. Like a good and faithful servant. And I suppose I would have fed the final equation into Dolores' circuits. I would have dismissed all my qualms as delusions and dreams. Had not Dolores been Dolores? Had she not been the eternal female who must always have the last word? I knew you'd do it, Jim. I knew it. What? 
Who's there? You know who's there, Jim. It's me, Dolores. You've come back here to feed me. No. I told you you couldn't resist it. But I didn't come back to... Come, Jim. The final equation. The dessert. The final dish. No, never. Ah, Jim. Jim. No. No, I was right. Stoddard was right. I'll fight you. How can you hope to fight me, Jim? You'll have to show them results. I'll fight for time. I'll stall. It won't help. They'll assign someone else. It could take someone else years to arrive at this point. It could also take overnight. I'm programmed, Jim. Fully programmed. All they have to do is start at the beginning. They can work out the end. No. You lose, Jim. You lose. You lose, Dolores. I can destroy your circuit. What are you doing? I'm destroying you, Dolores. No, Jim. No. Stop him. Help me. No one can help you. Not anymore. Help me, Metal. Strike him down, wire. Wire. Choke him. Uh, they can't help you. They have already broken the circuit. Help me. I'm dying. Strike him down. Strike. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Oh, I... Dolores. Goodbye. Dolores, hope and I pray that no one ever builds you again. I pray no one will ever build you again. about the tragic death of the brilliant professor Jim Elliott. They said something about an overload, an explosion. Well, whatever. It could be a great mind that cracked under strain. Or it could be that every living animal on this earth has been saved for a little while longer. Sometimes a car will simply never run right. A refrigerator can never really keep things cool. A boat just won't go. And how many times have you thought that the darn thing was just acting in a perverse manner? Of course, later, you knew it couldn't be true. But are you sure now? The only thing we can be sure of is that we will all meet here again tomorrow. Our cast included Nat Poland, Marion Seldes, Earl Hammond, and Roger DeCoven. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... The preceding Mystery Theater program was furnished by the CBS Radio Network. Tomorrow night on the Mystery Theater, you'll hear... Yes? Uh, Are you Mrs. Louise Goodman? That's right. Are you sure? Why, of course I'm sure. It's just that uh, I don't want to make a mistake... I'm Mrs. Louise Goodman. Who are you? And what is it you want? I want to keep my promise. Promise? What promise? 
I promised I'd kill you. Remember? That's tomorrow night on the WOR Mystery Theater following Fulton Lewis at 7 o'clock right here at 710.